Hi guys, and welcome back to Toastmaster Kristen. Today, we're gonna to be talking about something a lot of people have been asking me about, OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. And specifically, we're gonna talk about how to make the countdown timer, the basic countdown timer that I've been using between the speeches for all of our contests is the one we're gonna to learn today. The first thing you need to do is go out to obsproject.com. It will look just like this, and you'll see that it is available for Windows, for Mac, and for Linux. I am not gonna go through today how to download and set up the OBS software. I will link videos that other people have already put together and the ones that I used in the description box below. You'll need to do that, get this downloaded and set up, before you can start creating your timer. So let's assume you have already downloaded and set up your OBS project. Let's go over there and create our timer. Now we're over here, we've opened up our OBS. The first thing we need to do is add a scene. Over here in the bottom left corner where it says scenes, you're gonna click on plus and you need to name your scene. We're gonna call our scene timer and click okay. The first thing that we need in our scene is a background image because scenes layer things over top of each other. So we wanna start with a background image. You need to already have this background image available. I'm gonna use one of the Zoom backgrounds that I downloaded from toastmasters.org. I already have it on my desktop. So I am going to go over here to sources. Our background image is a source and click plus. You'll see all the different sources that are available in OBS. What we're putting on right now is an image. So I will click on image. We can create a new one. If you already had some from previous scenes, you could use them. We are creating a new one and we are going to call it background. You can call it anything you want, it doesn't matter. It opens a window that allows me to go browse for the file. I have dropped that file on my desktop in my Toastmaster Kristen folder. It's right here and I will open. Now you'll see there's some funky edges. So we need to right click click transform, and then choose fit to screen. Now our background image is fit to the screen. The next thing that we want to do is add some text over this. Because this is the timer that I use in between speeches, there's a couple things I want on there. I want a disclaimer letting everybody know that the meeting's being recorded. I would like something saying, please be silent between speakers. And then I'm gonna want the actual countdown timer. So let's start with text. We're gonna go over to sources, click the plus and choose text. What do we wanna call our texts? I think this one is going to be the disclaimer. So I will call this disclaimer. I may use this in many other timers and then that way I will always have this disclaimer named and I'll know what it is and I can use it again. So I'm gonna click okay. It's defaulting to Arial. I am going to say this meeting is being recorded. Please leave camera off if you do not wish to appear in the recording. All right, right here I can select the font and the size and the style. It defaults to 256. That's gonna be way too big. I'm gonna shrink it down. We'll go for 100 to start and then I'll show you another way you can also shrink it. So we'll say okay to that. If you scroll down, you can also change the color 
because I am using a dark image that's fairly solid, I can stick with white and that's not a problem. I'm going to click OK. All right, obviously I can move this around, but it's still way too big. So another way that you can shrink it down is to go over here and grab the edge of this text box and just pull it down. Oop. If you go too fast, sometimes it flips your image over. <laughs> so you can do this, or you could have sat there in the font section and keep changing the size until you get it where you want. But I actually find this one a little bit easier because you can sort of visualize it while you're doing it. All right, that looks about right. I'll try to center it here. Okay, I think that looks good. The next thing I wanna add is text again. So I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna cl click the plus button and text. This is going to be my quiet message. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call it quiet. And say, okay. Please remain silent between speakers. Again, I know this is way too big, so I'll go over here and I will size it down to 100. We'll just see how that goes and click OK. And actually, this looks about the right size. So I'm just going to go ahead and place it where I want it and put it right there. Next, I want a couple more things. I want the break will end in dot, dot, dot. And then I want the actual text that's going to be the timer. So I'm going to add a source, which again will be text. And this one, I'm just gonna call it break. Again, call it whatever you want. Something that you can remember what it means is helpful. The break will end in dot, dot, dot. I'm going to go over to this font. I'm going to go ahead and size this down again. Come on. There we go. And I'm going to say OK. The break will end in. I actually feel like I want this to be a little more prominent. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this text box and pull this, make it a little bit bigger and put it right there. All right, and last but not least, I need a timer. That's what we're talking about, right? Countdown timer. The countdown timer actually starts with text and I'll show you why. So we're gonna go back here and we're gonna add a source. Again, we're gonna say text. I'm going to call this countdown and choose OK. Now the way the countdown needs to look is 00 colon 00 colon 00. And I think that's probably already going to be an OK size. So I'm not going to change the size this time. I'm just going to say OK. And I'm going to pull this down and put it right there in the middle. All right, great. Now you have something that looks like a countdown timer, but it doesn't do anything. The way that you make this timer actually count something down is using something we call scripts. To get to your scripts, you need to go up to the top left corner, click on tools, and then click scripts. I have downloaded a brand new version of OBS today. So you'll see that I have no scripts available. This is exactly what you will probably see. So if you go down here and click on the plus button, it will go find the scripts that you have available. We're looking right here for the countdown script and we're going to open it. Now the countdown script is available and it says over here, what's the duration? And what is our text source? And this is why we had to use text because this tells us where it's going to show the timer. So we want to click on the down arrow and 
we called it countdown. So we're going to choose that. And then what do you want the final text to be? Do you want it to, when it's finished counting down, do you want us to say starting soon? If you're doing that at the beginning of a presentation or say at the conference, when you're counting down to something big that's going to start, you might want it to say starting soon when it counts all the way down to zero. But for our purposes, we just want it to stay at zero, zero. So I'm going to actually type in zero, zero, colon, zero, zero, colon, zero, zero, because that's what I want it to display when it's finished counting down. And then when we do the one minute in between, obviously we set this at one minute, but you can set it for any time you want. And I will click reset timer and I'm going to click close. And now you will see that where I put the countdown text is now an actual countdown timer. During the contest, anytime that I need to reset the timer, all I have to do is go back to tools, scripts, and hit reset the timer and close and you'll see it starts over again. That is as simple as it gets, creating a timer in OBS. One last thing you need to know is how you're actually gonna display this timer at your contest or meeting. There's a couple options. You can use share screen and just share your OBS screen or you can use the virtual camera. OBS has a virtual camera that works in Zoom. Once you have OBS downloaded, when you open Zoom, your camera options, if you click next to them, they should show OBS virtual camera as one of your options. And if you turn that on, then what you're going to be showing instead of your camera of yourself is whatever your OBS screen looks like. Now, if you want them to also see you, what I normally do is I come into the meeting from two different logins and I set one of them to be the OBS virtual camera. I set the other one just to be myself. So there's a couple options that you can use. I hope you found this helpful and that you will find all kinds of fun things to do with OBS. I'll be posting videos in the future about more advanced things that you can do with the OBS software. So once you get started, it kind of takes over. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and make sure you click that notification bell so that you'll know when I post new videos. As always, you can email me at toastmasterkristen2020 at gmail.com if you have any questions. See you in the next video and happy OBSing.